Dominic, what are we here to talk about today? We're here to talk about um, the latest thing I've been designing for a CM4 um, compute module. Now this is a Raspberry Pi 4, but in a system or module form factor for integration into other products. Yes, uh, just here. Do you want to give us the tour of the board? Yeah, I can do. Um, so let's move that out of the way. So what we've got here is the um, 2711. Uh, we've got the... Um, that's the same chip that's on uh, Raspberry Pi 4. Indeed so, exactly the same. Uh, we've got the uh, RAM, the LPDDR4 RAM over on the side. Uh, at the top over here, we have got the um, Ethernet Phi. Now that's a novelty, right? We haven't previously put Ethernet on a compute module. No, so we've got that built in, and that means it's now much easier to interface to Ethernet because all you now need is just the external uh, mag jack, so there's no extra silicon needed on your interface board to get Ethernet interface connectivity. Now, is this the same Phi that we use on Raspberry Pi 4? No, it's an enhanced Phi, and it supports the IEEE 1588 timing standard, which allows you to synchronize devices on your network. And this is kind of a more industrial, it's a more industrial grade fire than we've used yep. before. Yeah. Exactly right, yes. This, uh, you've got a, I, I'm assuming this is wireless over here? Absolutely. So we've got the, um, a, a wireless module on here, um, and we have a connector called a UFL connector, which allows you to go off to an external antenna. But you have an antenna on the, on the board as well? Absolutely, yeah. The next thing down is the uh, onboard antenna. So you can switch between the two antennas depending upon your application. And that's a software. That's a software selectable switch. Absolutely. Yeah. So boot time. Uh, and this is the same. This is the same wireless chipset that's used on Raspberry Pi Four. Yep. Same. Uh, same chipset. So exactly the same. So something that works on the Raspberry Pi Four should just work straight across on here. And this is dual band 11 AC uh, wireless LAN and uh, uh, Bluetooth Five. Bluetooth. Yep. So you've got all of that. Can we talk a little bit about conformance? That's in a can, like on a Raspberry Pi Four. What does that mean from a conformance point of view? That means it's easier for you to uh, have your product conformed because we will do the compliance for um, the module and you can then use that compliance paperwork to, to uh, help them ease your the compliance for your system at the far end. Right, so it's an abbreviated compliance process versus putting your own wireless chipset down. Yes, because um, if, you, if you've done wireless um, testing before like you have but other customers may not have done, it's an awful lot of work to get wireless testing through the conformance. You mentioned you mentioned RAM and so we've mentioned RAM and we've mentioned flash um, and we've mentioned wireless. Now there's a there's a bunch of options yeah. uh, on this board. What are the options? So you can have the RAM in one gigabyte, two gigabytes, four gigabytes, and eight gigabytes of RAM. So there's four options for your RAM option. Um, you've also got onboard eMMC. Um, and you, you can have an option without eMMC if you don't want the eMMC. And that's what we call the light. That's what we call the light, yes. So if you want eMMC, you can have that in, um, again, four size options up to 32 gigabytes. Mm -hmm. So you've got four times four. And you have with or without wireless. OK, so that, that by my calculations, is 32, 32 different SKUs. 32 product. different SKUs. Right. And so that allows uh, our customers to choose exactly where they want to be for to have the right um, combination of features for their final product. Mm -hmm. So the um, starting price for the um, simplest um, CM4 is $25, mm -hmm. uh, and they rise from there. And that's interesting. That's the same price as the, uh, the cheapest uh, Raspberry Pi CM3 or 3 Plus product. Yeah, absolutely. So um, same, as, same as that, but you now get a lot more technology on board. So before we didn't have the Ethernet Phi, uh, we didn't have a wireless option, uh, we didn't have RAM density options, they were all one gigabyte products, uh, and we just had that 0, 8, 16, 32 gig um, uh, flash yep. um, option. And what we've managed to do is to put is to equalize the prices of the, the equivalent the equivalent compute module 4. Um, is, uh, is it's a, a compute module 4, those four that overlap the, the older products, they have the same price point. Yes, they have the same price point. But we've also added, of course, the 2711 features in as well. So you get um, you get the dual HDMI. Both at, um, both ports can do 4K simultaneously. Mm -hmm. um, and we've also given people um, PCI Express. That's the PCI Express that on a Raspberry Pi 4 is used to implement USB 3. Yes. Yes. Um, so if you don't want USB 3, um, you can use that for your own applications. Um, also in the corner of the board is an onboard power supply. So 
the CM4 now needs one power supply rail, one five volt power supply rail to power the whole module. Well, previously you had to provide, I think, at least uh, five volts on 3v3, and there were some sequencing requirements. This is just five volts in. Just five volts in. So that, again, takes silicon away from your final product, and it's, it's all captured on our module. Mm -hmm. um, and as you say, the base, uh, the pricing is um, very similar to the CM3. So 25, 30, 35, 40 dollars for those uh, one gigabyte uh, variants with no wireless. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, you put one down there next to a, a Compute Module 3. Um, the, the thing that jumps out, obviously, is that for the first time in the Compute Module, in the, in the life of the Compute Module line, there's been a change of form factor. Indeed so. And, and that's been driven entirely by the new interfaces we wanted to bring out. We really wanted to bring out the um, second HDMI port um, and the PCI Express. So what we've done here, instead of using the SODIM connector of the um, CM3, we have got two high density connectors on the bottom here. So that allows your module to clip into your board um, and it actually takes up a less total board area when you consider the connector and everything, mm -hmm. but gives us this, these extra interfaces, these extra high speed interfaces. All right. So that's CM4. Um, there's a couple of other things that we're also talking about. One of them is the IO board. Now, whenever we've done a compute module before, we've also done an IO, an IO board to go alongside it. So here we've got the existing I.O. board that people will be familiar with, but now we've got a completely different I.O. board, completely new I.O. board for the CM4. This is a very different looking beast, right? Totally different looking beast. So it will, as you might expect, take a CM4. So that can just clip in there like that. Makes a really satisfying um, sound. Should yeah, make a satisfying sound, he says. Yeah, just push hard. Makes a, there we are. Makes there a we go. But what we've done is we've brought out all of the interfaces and we've brought them out in a way that you could perhaps use the um, CM4 IO board by itself in a complete product. Um, so you've got things like the dual HDMI, whereas before, of course, we only had one HDMI. Got the Ethernet socket, and as I was saying before, there's no extra silicon now required between the Ethernet, the MagJack Ethernet socket, and the CM4 board. Um, we've we got have power over Ethernet support on here as well? Yes, we've got the header coming off, so you've got. Uh, got the uh, Raspberry Pi hat connector, so you could put a Raspberry Pi PoE hat in um, and power the board over Ethernet. We've got USB, USB 2 on here. So the CM4 itself, um, just like on the um, CM3, brings out a single USB 2 port. And what we've done on the IO board here is put a little USB hub to give us some USB connectors. Uh, if you haven't got, if you've got a light CM4 light board, You've got the SD card socket, but if you've got EMMC on board, you can't use the SD card socket. Uh, power input. Now, this is a bit of a change from our previous power inputs. Uh, a much wider voltage range is possible. So typically, people will use 12 volts to power it. But if you don't need to power certain things on the board, like what we'll come to in a second, PCI Express, you can actually put up to 24 volts into the board, which is much more of an industrial voltage. So that should make it easier for people to use. And all of this stuff on this side here is power conditioning. That's all power supply on, on the side here. So one thing I'll also say is the I.O. board, you, you'll be able to download the files from our website uh, shortly. Um, and that means you can take a, a design that we know that works and delete the bits you don't want to. So if you don't want to the complicated power supply, you can delete the power supply, etc. So just continuing on around the board, the big thing here is this PCI Express socket. So that is just wired straight to the CM4, and that allows you to plug in all sorts of things. What have you got? You've got a what? pile of PCI got, Express devices. I've got a pile of PCI Express devices. So if you want USB 3, uh, you can put in an off-the-shelf USB 3 card, and that gives you, here we've got four USB 3 ports on there. That's actually the same chip that we use on Pi 4, right? Exactly. This particular board is exactly the same chip we use on Pi 4. Um, and that's what you know, I've been doing some testing in the lab with. But we've got other things you can plug in. Now this is an NVMe drive. So we can uh, plug that in if I plug that in the right way around. Now NVMe drive is, very, is a very fast flash interface. So to this NVMe drive here in the lab, I've been getting 390 megabytes a second of write speed. So a little bit faster than the SD card. That's significantly faster, uh, more than an order of magnitude faster than the SD card interface. Now, for some people, um, 
this um, PCIe card sticking out might not be an ideal um, position for their form factor. So you can get adapters. So I've got, just got one here. This is just a cheap one from the internet where I can put, the, I can put my uh, interface in. And now I could mount my card, whatever it might be, wherever I like um, in my enclosure to make a product that's nice and neat. So you can get all sorts of little adapters here. So don't be worried that you think, oh, my enclosure is going to be huge because I've got to have the card sticking out. You but this is coming it. back to the idea of this, for the first time we have a, an I.O. board, which isn't just a development platform, it isn't just a reference design. It's also kind of a product in itself. Absolutely, yes. Yeah. So that's been designed with that in mind. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Here, here is a um, network card. This is a, a 10 gigabit network card. So I've been testing in the lab with this uh, network interface. And I've just had it plugged in like this uh, on the bench. And I had it connected to some fiber um, uh, optic cable. And between two CM4 boards, I was getting 3.2 gigabits a second between the two. So, so you're very close to max, ma maxing out the theoretical capacity. This is a Gen 2, this is a Gen 2 X1 PCI yeah. Express. So you're getting pretty close to maxing out the theoretical four gigabit capacity of that link. Absolutely, and uh, yeah, which is which is great for people who want to do high performance uh, interfacing. Uh, so coming around the top, if I just swap to this other board here, we have um, display connectors, just like on the original um, CM3 uh, I/O board. We've got display connectors, and we've got the camera connectors, so you can have dual cameras uh, connected. And we've got the hat connector this time on the I.O. board. So you can put standard hats. This is just a Sense hat. Um, but you can put your standard hats, whether it's a, uh, a, a Sense hat or a PoE hat. Or both. Or both. Or both. Um, you can put those in. So we have a product here which is um, a, it's a reference design that we provide CAD for. Uh, we pro provide it in KiCad. Yes. So the, the files of the CM4 I.O. board will be available in KiCad. So that's a free CAD package. Uh, it's a reference design that you can use as a starting point for your own designs. It's obviously a development platform if you want to um, uh, if you want to um, uh, um, uh, get started with Compute Module, um, uh, but it can also be a product in itself. So it's kind of for the first time we're making a, an I/O board which has kind of really I guess three three separate roles. Yes, indeed so. Yeah. We talked a bit about wireless and ante external antennas. That brings us probably to the third piece. Yes. So. Um, if you've, if you've put this in a, a nice metal case with your uh, nice shiny new CM4, you may well find that the onboard antenna won't um, escape the uh, case. So what we've got here is a antenna kit. So um, it comes with a cable that you can uh, clip in to the uh, UFL connector. Uh, so it comes with a standard uh, bulkhead mount SMA um, socket that you can put on the edge of your case wherever you, is convenient to you and then a uh, little SMA antenna that you can screw in and have a little radio interface. Now the great advantage of our antenna kit is our radio is certified to work with our antenna kit which simplifies your certification. But only our antenna kit. But only our antenna kit. Um, those are the rules of the way that radio certification works that you have to certify the radio module with its antenna. You can't just chop and change the antenna. And of course, people are free to use their own antennas, but you have to then take on the burden of conformance yourself. Yes, absolutely. OK, well, there you are. So that's, that's CM4, um, the latest product in our uh, compute module lineup. Um, I, we hope people like it, I guess. Yes, I hope so too. Yeah.